Hey everyone, Darkwell here, and welcome to another one of my Dota 2 Hero Guides. Today we're going to be taking a look at Naga Siren. So Naga is the quintessential illusion-based hero. The other one would probably be PL, but he's a little bit different. He's just more annoying to deal with in fights and, you know, when he's farming a creep wave, but he's not really split pushing with his illusions. It's just very hard to find the real PL. It can be hard to find the real Naga, maybe in fights, you know, just like every illusion hero, but it's a little bit less difficult because she only spawns illusions every so often. And once you clear them or get them low HP, you can kind of tell which one is real. But the thing that's difficult to deal with with Naga is that she is just sending all of her illusions all over the map. She's pushing multiple waves, she's farming multiple camps, and then if you do find her farming, she just pops her ultimate, and it's like basically a get-out-of-jail-free card, and it's super hard to deal with this hero. She's going to secure her farm in 20 to 30 minutes. She's going to come out of the jungle, uh, split-pushing everything, pushing in the waves, making space for her team as a carry farming. It's going to be very difficult to deal with her because she's going to have like six items at 30 minutes or something ridiculous if she's able to uh, farm efficiently and, you know, she's played by a player that knows what they're doing. And so that's what you need to do when you're learning Naga is kind of just watch other players, high level players play this hero and learn how they are going to farm and their farming patterns and what they do with the illusions. And so this is like the quintessential micro hero because even other heroes that have summons like a Beastmaster, they're usually honestly grouping up those summons together in a ball and they're just kind of like running in a tower or you know grouping up with their team and just running down mid and like running at heroes and all that kind of stuff lycan is a good example chen is a good example they're not really splitting up their summons and microwing like that now they might have to you know switch between those different summons to cast abilities. Same thing with Meepo. You might split them up a little bit, but you're in a fight, you know, you're casting all the different abilities, switching between them. But Naga's a little bit different. She's more micro during the entire game with farming, splitting the map, pushing in all the ways, farming all the camps, all that kind of stuff. And then in team fights, it's not as complicated. You kind of just spawn them, select them, and then just run at people, cast your abilities, and hit them. So it's like in fights, she's not as complicated. It's more just the basic state of the game, how to farm and how to play the hero. That's more complicated. And so... Because of that, how do we think about Naga in general? Well, she's a carry, obviously. You could play her mid or something like that. We've even seen when she was really strong, her played offlane. But she's mainly just a carry. Even if she's played from the offlane, she's played as a carry. And she's going to be that illusion hero that's microwing and farming a lot. She's going to be top net worth, or she should be, if you know how to play her, uh, pretty much every game. And so because of that, she functions sort of like an alchemist, kind of like a Doom or how Doom used to function, uh, where you just always want to be like top net worth. Because if you're just right around everyone else that means you're having a really bad game you're not able to split push as much they must have illusion clear or something like that that's able to deal with you because you want to be just like you know five ten thousand gold ahead of the next carry or anybody on the enemy team at like 30 plus minutes so you just have one or two extra items and it's very very difficult for them to deal with you even if they have some illusion clear it doesn't matter because you have like 4k hp you have a uh, evasion you have damage you just have all these different things and so that's what this hero does. And she's very reliable at doing that, um, especially in patches where she is very good. Now, obviously, counters to the hero are heroes that can illusion clear. I mean, that's just still true. If you can stop her from split pushing by clearing the illusions very, very quickly with like hexes and all those kinds of things, that can be very good. If you can uh, track her down easily with mobility and also like built-in BKBs or things like that, that she can't really just escape with her Song of the Siren. That can be very good as well. Um, or just things where you can just like kill the rest of her team and she doesn't really do a lot of damage. Like she can't just like pin you down and just uh, with her net and stuff like that. So you can break free of net and then you can just kill the rest of her team and then deal with her afterwards. That can also be something that is good against Naga. Also people that can keep up with her and farm is really good as well because she obviously wants to be farming really, really fast. But if you can somehow you know, manage to get more farm, like with an alchemist, you can potentially deal with her because you're going to be on par with her as well. But for the most part, when she's good in a patch, you're going to be able to, if you know what you're doing, watch some pro players, learn their farming patterns, and then just dominate the games. And so even though it's more of a complicated hero, take some skill, take some learning, you should probably be able to, if you learn this hero and get really good at it, just like stomp games. So that's Naga Siren. That's how to think about her in general. Now let's jump in and take a look at her abilities. Now that we understand Naga in general, we can take a look at her abilities and see how she's able to be that really good quintessential illusion hero like I talked about. So first, we're actually just going to take a look at Mirror Image. This is her illusion ability. So you just press it, and then she kind of has a little bit of an animation there, and then she spawns a bunch of illusions, and that's just pretty much that. Uh, this has a cooldown that is reduced every time you put uh, levels into it. 
and then her illusions do get better when you put levels into them as well. But you can get this from level one, and usually you do get this level one. Um, you might get like net level one or something like that, but not really. That's very rare. It's usually just spawn your illusions, and from the get-go, it's very hard to lane in against this hero because you just have a bunch of illusions. You can send these at the support, all that kind of stuff. And then obviously, um, later in the game, you would just use these to basically on cooldown. Like every time you have it available, you're going to press this ability and send the illusions, you know, one to this camp, one to that camp. Uh, one down to the wave that you're near to push in the wave all that kind of stuff And that's just basically what you're going to be doing with this hero. It's pretty straightforward um, It's just it's not a complicated ability ability But like how to actually use all the illusions where to send them all that kind of stuff at what time are you tanky enough to send one? Illusion where they do enough damage to actually kill a whole camp or do you have to send two all that kind of stuff? It gets a little bit complicated there, but that's mirror image pretty straightforward Next we have Ensnare. This is the net I was talking about. You basically just cast it on an enemy and then they're rooted. And they're rooted for a very, very long time. This is a very good ability. Obviously they're not stunned, so they can just BKB, they can Manta. They can do a lot of stuff to get out of it, but it is very good against supports, especially early on. Because you're going to be farming so much, you should have decent levels. And uh, yes, you're going to get this ability last. You're going to max it out last, but it still is a very good ability because it's like a pseudo lockdown. I mean, it is lockdown, but a pseudo stun kind of thing. And sometimes you're just going to be against lineups that are just not going to have any good way to get out of Ensnare, which can be really good. Then we have Riptide, and this is an ability that just helps her farm, helps her do more damage. Basically, if we just spawn illusions here, I'll just show you how it works. Just basically on attacks, you and your illusions will just kind of like do a little twirl and... They will dish out damage, and they will reduce armor. So this is very good, obviously, like I said, for farming and for doing extra damage. It's kind of what allows you to scale. It will, what's allows you, it's what allows you to clear waves faster, to clear camps faster as well. So you're just going to be basically maxing these two abilities early on to farm. And then kind of maybe keeping one point in this ability, one point in your ultimate, for a while. Because... You don't really need them until later on in the game when you want to fight more. And then your ultimate is the get out of jail free card like I talked about. You can just press R. And then there's a small animation. And then you see there's kind of this, this visual effect. And then you can hear the song going off. And it lasts for a long time. And the enemies basically just cannot do anything. You can't even BKB during it. So once you're asleep, you're asleep. There's nothing you can do. And then the Naga can just basically press this if she's in danger. If you don't have BKB already popped, then there's nothing you can do. And, like, you can run away a little bit and then TP out. And then keep in mind, there is an AoE. It's very, very big. But, like, let's say you run away from a team fight and there's an Ember on the enemy team. Well, if the Ember gets out of the range of Song, and then he can pop BKB, jump in with his Remnant, and then potentially, you know, chains you or something like a Storm Spirit. These are things you have to think about because once... They are asleep, they can't do anything, but if you get out of the range, they can then potentially wake up, cast an ability, you know, do something like that, which can be bad for you. So keep that in mind. Other than that, there's really not much else to say. There is an Ags and Ags shard, but they're not really that big of a deal. I mean, they can be good, but it's not like game changing for the hero. So I'm not really going to cover it as of right now. But as you can see, it's a straightforward hero. Like this hero should be pretty easy. You spawn illusions. You have a root, and then you have a get out of jail free card, which can set up some stuff in team fights as well, which can be a little bit of a skill, not a skill shot, but it can be a coordination skill to coordinate it with your team and end it at the right time because you can actually, once you press it, you don't have to wait for it. You can actually press it again to end it um, prematurely, but still. So there's a little bit of a complicated things about the hero in terms of like mechanics, but other than that, it's pretty straightforward. It's just about setting the illusions, making sure you're microing them correctly, getting your farm, and then making sure they're not dying super quickly in fights and all that kind of stuff. So that's Naga. Those are her abilities. Now let's jump into a game and see how she's played. So now we're jumping into a replay here of Arteezy playing Naga, and Arteezy's camera usually is pretty crazy. He jumps around a lot, so... You know, if it makes you sick, sorry about that, but that's just kind of how it is. I wanted to pick an Arteezy replay, because he's a classic Naga player. He's kind of one of his uh, signature heroes. And so basically, what you do with this hero in the laning stage is pretty straightforward and simple. You just spawn your illusions. Not necessarily off cooldown, you don't want to be constantly using them all the time. But what you do is you use them to secure last hits, or like run at the enemy. So you can see he's using them to zone the enemy back while he secures last hits or denies. And that's kind of how you want to be using them. They're very annoying to deal with. It's very hard to clear through them. They don't do a lot of damage early on, especially like level 1, but it's still annoying. You don't want to be taking that harass damage when a bunch of them are hitting you, and uh, that way you can secure your creeps. And then especially after level 1, once you get more points into Riptide, more points into your mirror image as well, you will, like, just kill supports just with your illusions by running them at the support. So it's very good... Uh, 
And you can see he didn't necessarily use that as soon as it was off cooldown, but as soon as he as soon as he needs it, um, it's a good opportunity to use it that he needs to be last hitting or, you know, harassing or zoning people out. He's going to use his abilities. Then we have the guy just AFKing here, which I didn't realize. <laughs> he just AFKs. I don't know if he was, like, watching something or what was going on there, but he took, I mean, he took a lot of damage. I guess it's just a good display of how you can take a lot of damage from Riptide and level one fi uh, fissure. What? Level one mirror image. Um, level, these two levels, and if you get a stun, let's say the Venge stun, and he, like, ran at them like that, I mean, that's a lot of damage. So, that's really just Naga in a nutshell in the laning stage. It's not much more complicated than that. Really, the only complicated part then after this is after you secure your lane, you kind of push the lane in pretty early, and then you can, uh, either pull, like, have your support pull, or you can, uh, you can go farm the jungle. Like, he's even farming when the enemy pulls. He's even farming that pull. So it's, like, not the best to pull against the Naga in the lane. So there's just... This hero is very, very hard to lane into. Um, you have decent amount of HP, decent amount of armor. Uh, as long as you don't put yourself out of position, you know what you're doing. And against certain matchups, he obviously might be weak, but... Um, she might be weak, but as long as you know what you're doing and you position yourself pretty well and you use your illusions correctly, it's going to be hard for the enemies to really win the lane. You're going to be able to secure most lanes. Now, the only thing that you really need to think about is when do you transition out of the laning stage with your illusions. So we'll fast forward to that. So I fast forward only a few minutes here because I wanted to show you this next spawn of mirror image because I think this is the first time he actually goes. He sends some illusions over there to the small camp to actually hit other creeps. So you can see right around level 5 um, is the earliest you want to do this. But then other than that, I'm going to speed up to about 4 times speed. Might be a little bit crazy here. But basically, they pulls, so then he goes to farm this, and then he gets very aggressive. Because he's doing pretty well in the lane. But you can see, this is what you want to be doing with this hero, because he has he has 12 armor and 1,000 HP. And he's just can play very aggressive at this point. 6-7 minutes in the game. He's obviously having a very good laning stage, but you can secure your lane pretty well with Naga almost every game. Um, he even went to get the illusion, or sorry, the uh, experience rune here. Then he got blocked off, but still, like, he's playing aggressive on the enemy side of the map. Um, he knows that the enemy's level 4 and there's nothing he can do. Like, the offlander just cannot do anything right now, and it's very, very hard to play into a Naga. So... I think basically you're either going to want to be getting aggressive like this, trying to take the tower, or you're going to want to be splitting up your illusions to farm. And that's pretty much the two things you're going to be doing, depending on the game. Um, because now he's going back to farming, and now from here on out, we can see he's going to split his illusions up, and he's going to push the tower, because it's almost dead here. So the main reason that he wanted to do that is because once this dies, like, this entire part of the map is just yours. Like, he can farm any of this, he can farm any of this, he can even send illusions in here to farm this camp, potentially even farm ancients, like, everything is going to open up for him even before 10 minutes. And then, obviously, with one point in your ensnare, and even with a stun on your five or anyone else, like, the enemy just cannot do anything. Um, especially once you're this far ahead in levels and you have this good of a laning stage. You can have this good of a laning stage in a lot of lanes, like, obviously... He's playing against very good players, and he's a very good Naga Siren player, but still, like, you can secure your lane and your early game with this hero very, very easily. So you can see he already has 61 last hits, including that tower, at not even 9 minutes left, and this is, like, definitely reliable on this hero. And so, then from there on, you're just going to be splitting up the map as much as possible, splitting up your illusions, going to f camps and to uh, the lane and trying to push in the lanes while also farming as much as possible. So I fast forwarded up here to 12 minutes. He actually died once because he didn't have uh, a point in his ultimate and they brought like every every hero, I think all five heroes, maybe four, to try to kill him by himself and he just barely died. So he switched sides of the map and this is because he's basically just going to take over the entire enemy part of the map too here. And obviously the enemy carry, the Slark, could go to the other side of the map, which is probably what he did actually if I look. Let's look at the Slark, where is he? Yeah, Slark's over here. So it makes sense that they would switch sides when the Naga went over here. But you can see he sent Illusions mid to try to push that in. Now he's has Illusions spawning here in a second. But you can see how aggressive he's being, how far behind the enemy lines he's being. And then he's going to spawn um, his Illusions there and then send them to different places in the jungle. Then he's going to send one Illusion to the big camp and he's going to go to the medium camp here. And this is exactly what you want to be doing as Naga. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details about every single way or like where to send your illusions when that's the thing about this hero is it's not complicated on its face but it's all about experience about matchups about the game state of where you want to position your hero when you spawn illusions so you can send them to as many camps as possible and get as much farm as possible as quickly as possible because you can see just right there 
he was farming the camps, and then he can't kind of came back to the middle of the map to spawn his illusions, so that he could send them everywhere from like a middle point. Because if you spawn them too passively, uh, then you're not, they're not going to get to the camps or the waves by the time you know they uh, they disappear or they despawn. So it's important, if you can, to spawn them as aggressively as possible and then work your way as your hero back with your illusions going aggressive. But obviously, again, that's something that you're going to have to learn from watching as many replays as possible, playing the hero a bunch. It's just very much a feel thing, an understanding of the map. And this is where this hero gets complicated. It's all about map awareness, map understanding, pushing your limits, knowing where to be, where the enemy heroes are, all that kind of stuff. So it's not something I'm going to be able to give you like a shortcut in... Um, in this small video like this is just something you're gonna have to learn over time by watching heroes like our or players like our T T Z on this hero. So I just jump forward to this little skirmish here. Because you can fight with this hero, especially once you get Orchid, which is definitely the build currently. Now it might change depending. But you can see the Slark pops his ultimate and the Earthshaker's there, and then he uses his ultimate his song to kind of set up with his team, which is really good. He also gets away from the Earthshaker to make sure he's not in range of the Echo Slam. And they're able to kill both the Slark and the Earthshaker because basically there was nowhere for them to go. They were just surrounded. All the stuns were coming out and all that kind of stuff. So yes, Slark is very elusive and he's good um, to kind of just jump in and get out of danger with his pounce and with his ultimate. But obviously if you song during the ultimate, he just kind of sits there. He might regen a little bit, but then he's immobile and he can't really do anything after that so it's very good against those kinds of heroes um heroes like you know any kind of mobility heroes if you can song aggressively that can be very good so that's just an example of how to song aggressively that takes some coordination obviously with your team to know what they're doing and to know you know that they want to go in at that certain time and all that kind of stuff so it's something that maybe really only happens at higher mmrs at lower mmrs i would mainly suggest to use your ultimate as a get out of jail free card especially because now he has to be very careful in the map because if he gets gone on, he doesn't have his ultimate to escape. Um, but you can see for the most part, he's still just farming away. He'll participate when he's around fights or when his farming pattern kind of goes to where the fight is. But you can see he's setting his illusions at the waves, being super, super annoying still. Um, you can still fight once you get like one, you know, orchid or manta orchid, that kind of stuff. But you still want to be farming, farming, farming. It's not until like 20, 30 minutes until you really want to be participating a lot more and you have like two or three items. So the next thing I want to show you is basically that he got his Manta, he got, uh, he has this good timing with Manta Orchid, and he kind of split the whole map up, pushed all the waves in, and then they went to Roche. And so then this is what you want to be doing. Once you have at least Manta, and probably one other, two other items, you can see he has Midas here, so he probably would even have Heart at this point if he didn't have Midas. But... Once you have this timing, especially now that he has Aegis, you're just going to control the whole map. You can see he's setting Illusion's bottom, he's going mid where his team is, he's farming as well, still at the same time. And... Now he's getting super aggressive. He goes in here, I think, and kills the Warlock with the net, which is great. Then, basically, his team is in a bad position, and the Warlock buys back. So you can see this is the perfect example of how to use your ultimate to get out of jail free, to retreat, to be like, okay, well, there was buybacks now from a big teamfight ultimate in the Warlock, and now we're just going to get out for free, and then we can reset with the Aegis three minutes left to go and go back in. So this is all these kinds of things you can do with this hero while you're split pushing, while you're farming better than anyone else. You can see he's 5k ahead of the Slark, which the Slark's been farming really well this game. I mean, this, this Slark is not a bad player. The Slark is very, very good, but still, he just, he cannot farm nearly as fast as this Naga. It's just so hard to keep up with this hero. And he has all these ways to make sure that you just can't deal with him. And so that's a great example of how to use uh, Song defensively in a team fight to save you and your allies. Now, for farming in the mid to late game, I just want to show you this little clip here. So he was top, he spawned illusions, and just look at the minimap. Just like kind of focus on this part of the minimap, and that's like just this part of the screen, and that's all I want you to look at. And just look at what's happening. He's sending an illusion here, he has an illusion farming here, illusion there. They saw a bunch of enemies there. He TP'd bottom, he spawned illusions. Now let's just like fast forward and watch what he does with these illusions, and watch what he does for the next like minute. He's kind of like behind enemy lines. You can see where the Slark is. You can see where the Queen of Pain is, where their whole team is. Yet, where's he? He's behind all those enemies, and he's just pushing all the lanes and being super annoying. And so, there's really, despite the fact that, like, you know, they might get a kill or two on the enemy side, there's nothing they can do. Because all their lanes are being pushed in. This Naga's just ratting them to death. Like, it's just super hard. And yet, here he has his ultimate. Let's see if he gets out, actually. I'm sure he does. He's just going to pop ultimate here. Oh, nope. Is he not going to get out? Nope. He gets out. 
See, that's what I mean. So they brought all four heroes, maybe all five, to try to get him. They used all the stuns. They have, you know, Earthshaker with a million stuns. They have Slark Pounce, which he wasn't actually able to pounce in there. But um, they have the uh, Visage with the two birds. They have all these ways to stun him. And yet, you know, for one second, if he just gets off that little animation, yep, he's set free. And see, look at the look at this 30-minute timing. Look at how much farm he has. He has, uh, with the Midas, obviously, but the Manta, the Heart, the Butterfly, Orchid. And he still has room to grow. And this is just what this hero does. Even though his, like, team is not doing that well... He's end up he's going to end up winning this game because of the split push because of how hard it is to deal with this Naga. And so, although it seems like a relatively simple hero to play on its face, it can get very complicated how you need to play the map and what you need to do to make sure you can win these games. But if you get good at this hero, you can absolutely stomp games, and it's going to be very annoying and very hard to deal with if you're good at this hero. So, that's how to play Naga Siren. I hope that helps everybody understand the hero a little bit better. Obviously, there's a lot of extra little things I can't really teach you in one video, but. And that is my Naga guide, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, like, comment, subscribe, all those kinds of things if you like the video. And as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.